Welcome along everybody. Um, today I'm going to show you how I made this card which is called Frozen Bubble. So we'll get straight on. As you can see um, I've masked off my card with a piece of torn A4 copier paper. Now if you tear paper you get this sort of you know uh, jagged type of edge if you cut it you get a smoother edge so for this particular project we I've torn it because I want that sort of fluffy look to the snow um, I'm going to be using the seasonal branches collection for this and also the mouse from the magical Christmas collection um, as always I'll put a list of the uh, everything I used on the uh, comment section of the video so I'm going to get straight on um, so I'm using Distress Oxide and I'm using uh, Chip Sapphire and I'm going to use a blending brush for this uh, because it's quicker really to do the, um, the colouring because we want this to be quite dark blue. Um, so I'm going to go all over this, covering every part of the top of the card. Um, these, these Distress Oxides are sort of fairly new to me. And I've been watching um, Wendy's techniques. And I think if you're applying a large area of colour, these blending brushes are, are, are great for this. Um, if you haven't got any blending brushes, you can just use the baby wipe method like I've shown you on the other videos. Um, <laughs> you do tend to get a bit messy because um, distress oxides are a little bit um, wetter than normal inks. So where I've torn the paper, because I've torn it, it's quite delicate. So I think I've told you in the other vis videos, try and go upwards like this from the torn, torn paper section so that you don't go underneath it. Um, this, you know, it's a little bit fiddly, but you, you want that lovely crisp white image when you take it away. So um, just work your way up from there. And then when you think you've probably covered that line, and perhaps a little bit more over this side, and then you can go, go in over the top just with the normal blending. I'm just gonna load my brush up a little bit more just to make this a little bit quicker. Now, as always with these projects, if I was uh, doing this, uh, you know, uh, not making a video of this, I would then let this distress oxide dry for a little while because um, ideally when you put the bubble on you want to have a sort of fairly dry surface to work with. I haven't got the luxury of that in the video but you know if at home if you're doing this at home take take your time um, you know don't try and do it in a rush like I am because I think it you know the the more you put into a card probably the more you get out of it. <laughs> okay so I think that will do for the purpose of this demonstration. And then I like to, I'm just gonna put the lid on that, and then I like to add a little bit of black, um, just to, uh, for two reasons, A, to darken up the picture, but also it just gives a little bit of depth, um, uh, a little bit, makes it a little bit more 3D. Now, as I've said to you in previous videos, this is, my black I'm using for this is very dry, a very dry ink pad. So if you've got a wet ink pad, do, rub it off on a piece of um, scrap paper first because you don't want great big black blotches all over all over the sky. So I don't know if you, this shows on the video, but you just get that little bit of, um, of depth. It just gives it that, that little bit of depth to the, it's not, you know, it's not just one colour. So I'm just, I don't, we don't need a lot of this. In fact, I think that'll do. Okay. So now I'm going to remove this very carefully and you can see the nice crisp line it's left for the snow. And then I'm gonna use this to make, tip it this way and make a line where I want my bubble to sit, which will be about here. Maybe a little bit further down there. And then I'm gonna just take the same brush that I used to do the sky, I'm not putting any more ink on it, and then just very gently 
just brush it over that line there. So you're mostly onto the paper and then you just go over it slightly to create a snow line. So it, then you can check. I think that's fine, I'm happy with that. So, And then what we'll do is we'll add in a few more. So we're gonna put one coming from here. Again, you don't need to load your brush again. You've got enough ink on the brush and on this piece of paper to make these lines. You don't really want them really dark. There, we'll put another one along here. Like this. And then finally, I think we'll have one coming down. I just like to get that into the corner so it doesn't sort of abruptly stop. Like that. And then where you've got this big white piece, just take your brush and just gently go over that. Now, the, these marks on here are just the glue from where I had the had the paper stencil, so just rub those with your finger, rub them off, that's the reposition of the tape, and then where, where it's left a little white gap, just go in with your, with your brush. Okay, so now we're going to do the bubble. So I'm going to put the stencil there, because obviously I want the bubble to be sitting on the ground. So I'm not going to go right around the circle, I'm just going to go to either side. And just to be sure that I don't, in fact, I don't think that's quite straight, I'm just going to put it straight like that. And I'm just going to tape it down because I don't want to, I don't want it to move while I'm putting the pencil lines around it. Just a little bit down this side. This is um, stencil tape, so it's quite low tack. Just be careful when you put it on the side that you've inked. You don't want to pull all the ink off. Okay, so I'm going to use a Posca pen now. These are a little bit um, runny. So what I suggest you do, if you're using one of these, just run it off onto a bit of paper first. Make sure there's not a great big blob of ink on the bottom of it. And then we're going to go round the stencil to our snow line. There and there. And just go around a couple of times like that. And because you're drawing onto the ink, you might find you just need to run your Posca pen off on, onto a piece of paper to get it um, flowing again. Like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in a couple of um, sort of uh, reflection lines with the pen. So again, you see what happens. It, it tends to dry up a bit. So you just pump the ink back through to the nib. And we're going to make one there. And I'm going to put one at the top there. And I'm going to do another one there. Just for now. Now, we may need to go over these um, afterwards when we've done the stamping. So you can see they're a little bit rough, but I'm not too worried about that. Now, I'm going to take my coloured pencils. And I have uh, four here. But to be honest, as long as you've got a, this sort of range, it doesn't really matter exactly what the colours are. Um, if you haven't got colour pencils, use your inks and use a cotton bud or something um, thin to sort of do the colour in. Um, or even a crayon, I think, would work. So I'm going to start off with this darker blue and I'm just going to run it round. Can you see it's sort of intermittent? Just at intermittent stages. I'm then going to take the more turquoise blue and do the same thing in different, sorry, don't go there. <laughs> I'm not concentrating. <laughs> um, 
in other parts of the bubble. And then we're going to take our pink and the lime colour. Now, this is just really to reinforce the circle you've done. And this seems a bit bizarre, but when you've done that, just go back round it with your pen. Like this. Then we're going to remove this stencil. And I've just left a bit of removable tape there. If that happens, don't worry, because all we'll do is we'll just put our, find out where we had that mark like that, and we can just go over it with the. Okay, so you can get the idea of what's happening now. And now we're going to just go in a bit more with the pencils, but this time we're going to go on the inside of the bubble. So we're going to shade up so it's coming inside the bubble. Can you see? Try Obviously try and keep the, the round shape. And then over the top up here. And... Here. doesn't matter if you go on the white line but really what we're trying to do is get it just inside the white line and then I'm going to take the lime colour bring it down here now if you imagine a, a, a bubble you can actually see these sort of rainbow colours in it it's it's what makes it sort of translucent I think it's where the light catches it so it sort of makes sense. It, it, it's a bit bizarre when you're doing it. You think, oh, I don't know whether this is going to work. But um, it does make sense when you think about what a real bubble, what the rainbow colours in a real bubble will look like. And then when I get up here to this white, I'm just going to gently go over it with the pink. And you can see how gentle this is. You can hardly notice it. So, you know, you're not you're not doing anything drastic here. You're not making great big dark lines or doing anything drastic here. And then I'm just going to go in with my darker blue. Just bring that down there. And there. Like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of shade in on the outside of the bubble. So just very thin line of the lime. And I think I'm gonna go with the pink there, just a little line of the pink and maybe the turquoise. And then I'm gonna do the same this side. So this time I'm gonna go the other way around, do the turquoise and then I'm gonna go in with the pink, I think. Just on the other side of the bubble, like that. Uh, 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 I'm going to take a little bit of the pink up here over this reflection line. Like that. And a bit more there. Okay. Now... I'm going to stamp the mouse. Um, I didn't do this in my original card and then I had quite a lot of trouble doing the reflection of the mouse in the bubble with all the fern and, um, stamped. So I'm going to take my little mouse, I'm going to stamp him in VersaFine Onyx Black and give him a good stamp him. And then we want him about here because we want him looking into the bubble. So we're going to put him there. Press hard, and there's your mouse. And then to make the reflection, I'm gonna use a little bit of acetate, and I'm going to um, do this on top of my card. I wouldn't normally, but I want you to see what I'm doing. So we stamp the mouse in the onyx black, give him a really good stamp him, like this. If you've got any um, marks on your 
block just wipe them off and then and this is a bit tricky because it slips a bit so hold the acetate then hold your stamp down get a good impression lift it up and then you turn your acetate over and we're gonna I'm gonna just gonna put my stencil line back in there because I've done it I don't need him all the way up now so And then press that and can you see what I'm doing I'm rubbing my finger or you can rub with the heel of the of the color pencil because you you want to transfer that ink from the um, acetate onto your picture and then just lift off carefully and there's your image now if you want it darker than that that's fine you can always just go in with a fine liner. I think what we'll do is we'll wait and see what it looks like once we've stamped the um, the uh, a pine first, and then we'll see, you know, if we need to make them a little bit darker. Now, I like to ground the little animals because they otherwise they look like they're sort of standing in midair. So we're just going to take our stencil again, and I'm going to where his first foot is up there. I'm just going to run a gentle line along there. And then his second foot just along like that. And then I'm going to take my black again and just create a little shadow behind him and at the side of him like that. And then I like to go in, as I think people who watch my other videos, I like to go in with a little black fine liner and just put his feet actually in the ground like that okay so now I'm going to stamp my branches there's two branches in this set so I'm going to start off using the bigger one um, and I'm going to use um, a silver so if you if you so what I found is if you stamp in the silver first the white sticks to it better, so it, it makes it look more 3D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place my stencil back over the circle. I'm going to hold it with my finger. And then we're going to stamp. Now, obviously, we don't want to cover the mice, so I'm just going to cover those up a little bit like that. And then we're going to stamp that in there. And then we'll go back into the silver and take it round in a, in a circle. So you can sort of see what I'm doing here. If you actually look at a frozen bubble, it, it's quite interesting because actually the, um, the it looks more like a fern pattern. Uh, and I did think of using a fern, but because I wanted this sort of Christmassy, I thought actually this would look just as effective. And and it, you know, if you're making this as a Christmas card, it's sort of I think it's a bit more appropriate, really. So you can see I've gone around in a circle there now, and I'm just going to go up and fill in some of the gaps to take it to the outside. And I don't want to go outside the bubble with this, so just make sure your stencil's in place when you're doing this. And I'm just going to go gently go over the mouse there, like that. So we can still see him, but it looks like that is a reflection. And then I'm just going to do one more, which I'm going to take up to the middle. Now remember when you're stamping, we, we don't go underneath this line because this is where the bubbles sit in. This is the snow line. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean my stamp off a little bit. I just use um, a damp um, microfiber cloth. Just wipe it off. I'm using a bit of kitchen roll just to pat it dry. And then I'm going to use my Brilliant Moonlight White and give it a good inking. Now, ideally, again, you would let this silver have time to dry properly so the white sits nicely on top of it, but... You know, I haven't got the luxury of time uh, making the video, so I'm just going to go in. 
Now you can see there, try and avoid ink in the stalk, which I've done there. So what I'm going to do is just gently wipe that with my finger. And then I'm going to wipe the bottom of the stalk. The next time I go in, I'm just going to do the tip and I'm going to go just back. So we don't, because we don't really want the the stalk in it. We just want the um, the branch. And then I'm going to put some there and a little bit there. And I think we'll just go up to the side a little bit up here. Like that. Now it's up to you. If you get any of these lines, just dust them with your finger like that. Now it's up to you if you use the smaller branch. It really depends on, on you know, what you find um, easier to do with. I, I'm gonna um, just ink up the smaller branch just to go right down to the bottom of the mouse like that. And this bit by his head because I don't really want to cover him up too much. Obviously he's in the bubble so you need to make it look like the frozen, he's in the frozen bubble. So. Okay, so that's what we've got. So just brush away these little bits where I've been colouring. And then I'm going to, the Posca pen hopefully has had a little time to dry now. So I'm going to put my stencil back over like this. Make sure it's in position as carefully as you can. And then I'm going to take my fine liner, which... Um, Is here and I'm just going to add down here around here so you can see I'm not going all the way around I'm just doing it in sort of four sections so I'm just going to have a look see if that's enough yeah I think probably a little bit more black up here now it, it depending on what color background you do you don't always have to do this but I think because I've got a very dark background here, I want the bubble to sort of pop a little bit. Oh, that's <laughs> that's an unintended joke. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I want it to sort of um, highlight, highlight it, highlight the edges. So I think the black works on this colour card. You don't have to do this dark background. You can do any colour background you like, really. But obviously, this is the Christmas card. Um, so I wanted it to be snow and, and, a, and a dark sky. Um, but that's entirely up to you and, and you know experiment I always think you should experiment a little bit so I'm going to take my pen and I'm just gonna shade over my reflection mouse a little, just a little bit because and if you look there his hand wouldn't be coming out of the bubble. So that is a, a slight error. So what I'm going to do is just place that back there and I'm going to try and cover that a little bit with my brush. Like that. Right, and then I'm just going to go in and add a little bit of shading where my removable tape was. If you need to go back in and just redefine these lines, that's easy enough to do. That's why it's good to use the same piece of paper because you can just go in, you know, redefine that line like that. And then obviously just take that down there. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more black there under the under the mouse and then go over it with blue like that now if you um, do something like that and you think oh it's a bit dark now I don't really like it all you have to do is just lighten it up so you can go back in with your um, brilliance white um, you can just do it with your finger like this or you can use a cotton bud and just tone it back down again. But sometimes you, you need the contrast because if, if the rest of the card is quite pale, you need the contrast. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go back in with my Posca pen because um, I want these to be a bit whiter. So I'm just going to go back in and make that a much crisper, whiter image. And the same up here. Like that. And this one here, which is it, it can be a bit smaller. Um, and, you know, I can put one in here if I want to. Don't overdo it because, again, like I said to you in previous videos, you're just giving the viewer an idea of, you know, giving them a suggestion of the light. And then, again, just go in with your pencils and just shade a little bit. Now, ideally, you wouldn't do this when you just ink them because, obviously, the Posca pen's still wet, but, you know... As I said, I haven't got the luxury of time, so you, you would wait and make sure this is dry. And be careful of the um, branches as well, because you don't want to move them around either. So just do this very gently. I'm just going to bring a little bit of the pink in here, like this. And I think we'll have a little bit of the green on this side. And I'm just going to go in with the dark, sorry, with the darker blue here. Just to tone that down there a little bit like that, make it more circular. Okay, so I think you're getting the idea now. And then to finish the card off, I'm just going to um, wipe down a little bit because as you can see, when you use Distress Oxide, you you know, getting a bit of a mess around your card. So I'm just going to clean that off. And ideally now, you would let your card dry for a good while before you do this. But um, I like to go in, and I did with the original, with a quickie glue pen. And then you just make, just very carefully, because you don't want to pull the ink off, just where the strands of the pine go. Now, the reason you wouldn't do this when the ink is wet is because what's going to happen when I put the glitter on, it's going to stick to any ink that's wet, which isn't ideal, obviously. So, um, you know, just, just be patient with your work. Give it, spend a bit more time on it. The original I spent more time on. And then we're going to put this on a piece of paper. And we're going to use the um, Glamour Dust, which is a fantastic glitter. It's so fine. And just sprinkle it over. Try and avoid the mice if you can. So tip it that way because we don't really want the mice covered in glitter. And then I'm just going to move that out of the way. And then where you've got the glitter dust on the um, bit of the card you don't want, just take a clean brush and just wipe it off like that. You know, the glitter will, as long as your ink's dry, the glitter will only stick where you put the quickie glue pin. So you'll be able to do this. You don't have even have to do it straight away. And then also you can see that because my, I'm going to be very careful about this because my ink's still wet. You would, you know, let it dry off and then do this. And then I'm just going to tap that again. Wipe away. That bit there. And then have a look at your card um, and think, is there anything else I could do in that? I probably would just go over that black line again, just to make it a little bit more defined, like this. And down there. And there. So I think overall you get the idea of how I made this card. And, and as always with videos, you know, you don't really get the time in a video to do, to do them exactly how you did originally. But I hope that's given you 
um, at least a, a, a sort of structure of how, how this card was made. So, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I look forward to um, having you along the next time. Thank you very much.